Ladies and gentlemen, yeah, thank you very much. I, I'm grateful to Akatis for this invitation, and uh, I'm happy that many people can listen to this presentation, even though you can't be here. So I'd like to tell you about this um, insect Institute for Insect Biotechnology. It was the first uh, academic institute. Uh, Volker Bouffier, the governor of Hesse, was present when we opened it, and we have five professorships. We're growing, and we have the first master course of studies for insect biotechnology. And at the same time, um, it is my job to build up a Fraunhofer Institute, the Fraunhofer Institute for Bioresources. It is the largest and most successful research organization in Europe with more than 70 institutes, only five in life science. But that's the future. It's going to grow. So now in Gießen we are building up a Fraunhofer Institute, so we do transnational research um, based on the supply chain and we also develop products and services for and with industrial partners. So how can I create value with insects? So most of you and who listen to us uh, may have never heard of the fact that there is such a thing as bio insect biotechnology. We also call it yellow biotechnology, um, so we define it as such. It's the development and the use of biotechnological methods uh, to study insects or their molecules, cells, organs, or associated microorganisms and make them usable, for example, for medical use, pesticides, or industrial use. Um, it is also the development of biotechnological methods of control uh, the pesticide uh, and vector insects. So why are we dealing with insects? Well, um, to learn from insects means you learn how to be a winner. Um, so how do you define success in biology? And the biggest um, criterion is biodiversity. Whatever is diverse should be protected. Yeah, we know one million described species. So, therefore, insects uh, have the greatest amount of species. And we think that the biodiversity at this level, also at the molecular level, is reflected. So, they represent a gigantic uh, library of natural substances and therefore we have to make it use for mankind. So basically you can define it as um, value creation with insects. So I will talk about antibiotics. I don't have to explain that. Everybody knows it. We've all heard about it. We are facing a gigantic crisis uh, because people are getting resistant to antibiotics and we have to get over that. Many plants are also um, and pests and plagues are immune to antibiotics. So we know that um, uh, many uh, of uh, the pathogens that are resistant become resistant to antibiotics. And it's a question of time until we have uh, these germs in the hospitals. So if we need these antibiotics, why do so few companies uh, focus on it? On the one hand, it's expensive. You have to uh, basically spend one billion euros or dollars until you have it out on the market. Uh, NASA needed 12 years to get people on the moon, and we need 15 years to get uh, medication onto the market. And only one out of 5,000 candidates makes it into the market. Uh, it's just like uh, playing golf and have a hole in one. And in Gießen at the Fraunhofer Institute, we try to generate new antibiotics and uh, reserve antibiotics, niche antibiotics and antibiotics for veterinary medicine. And I like to use this picture here. Uh, I saw it in Peter Mosler's interesting magazine. 
Will we have at one point insects uh, for a recipe? Not maybe the insects, but the molecules being generated by insects. So, and we already have insects by recept. So maybe once in the while you have heard about the medical maids. So these are maids that are maggots that are used traditionally in the Civil War of America. And these maggots uh, um, helped they um, help the soldiers to survive. So with antibiotics, this therapy got uh, forgotten, and now it's living a renaissance because we have got new di di diseases like the diabetic food. So the classical medicine is not helping a lot, but with the maggots therapy, it is it is possible. So. For instance, instance Biomondel, they are using the maggots so in a sterile way, and these maggots are not directly put on on the wound. Uh, they are well packed, and they can be applied directly. So how can we use that? I don't understand why you don't like maggots on your wound, and well, the problem is. If a maggot is, uh, well, maybe <coughs> um, living an autonomous life in the hospital, it could ca cause other sickness. So, what can we do on the bio biological level? Everything that maggots produce can be useful. We can create, for instance, um, special substances. For instance, we have got here um, the blue bottle fly and the maggot, and we put them on the wound, and with uh, the saliva created through these maggots, well, uh, could kill all other bacteria, and they cool down also the wound even quicker than uh, with traditional medicine. They leave alone the. Um, they only they only eat let, let's say the damaged tissue and not the already healed tissue. So how can we use this? Um, this salvia. So everything that is produced by the maggots, so we use them, we pass them in a genetic sequence, and these molecules can be reproduced synthetically and used for a therapy. Giving you an example. So in the salvia, salvia of the of the maggots, we have got a substance that uh, avoids fungus. And not only uh, to for plants, also the Phytophthora, which is a, a fungi for uh, that damages the uh, potato plants. The fungi is called, um, and we use it as a patent, and we use it for plant protection. So again, going back to the antibiotics, we have determined that in the transcription, we had got 47 peptides tides that act antibiotically. And we have uh, tried to test them and find out that they are working symbiotically. So they could disinfect together a whole wound. And how does is this possible? So we try to find um, <clears throat> different substances that work perfectly well together. And in this sense, the Fraunhofer Institute has the company of Sadov around. And we had the idea, can we use these peptides and create a new antibiotica through that? And we had got 108 peptides together, included in a portfolio, and tested them 
if they have got, uh, if they are uh, resistance, and if they, if it is working in the in the testing tube or also in the physiological condition, for instance, in the blood. So we have got a criteria catalog that is an industrial standard and tested one by one. This was really a huge project and two were left over. So these peptides were left over and they were good candidates to invest in and because they are stable in the blood, they had no additional uh, effects and <clears throat> don't develop any resistance. And then we, we, with these streams, what could we do? Well, these are peptides and I'm trying to find different options also in other markets, for instance. Can we use them? to avoid lung infections, because these two are very uh, good, again, gram-negative effects. And with this background, these peptides are linked in a mouse model. For instance, if they can um, heal um, lung infections, that are generally um, that are generally already uh, have in resistance for other antibiotics. So these peptides must be produced in a huge amount, and therefore we need in s cells from insects to represent a peptide in a huge manner. So if we have got a peptide that is really useful. We, we gain such a huge amount and then we can um, <coughs> create special medication. When I speak of these projects, <coughs> you wonder, why do you uh, take these insects and how do you choose a particular insect? Do you take statistics? But even if you have lots of money, you can't just test thousands of insects. Usually, uh, I have an uh, evolutionary biological thesis um, because the discovery is that I have to have a feeling of this might be it. And that's, of course, the basis of a hypothesis. So let me talk uh, about the uh, Asian beetle. Um, the harmoniac series was come into uh, the cycle. So invasive animals have a better immune system as those that are closely related but non-invasive. So if I go to Europe or South America or Africa, I always always find pathogens or um, uh, germs that have, are not uh, immediately adapted. That sounds right, but it, uh, it's not something that has been proven. So I took one that was invasive. So we took this Asian uh, beetle, uh, it's from China, and um, uh, this uh, Lady uh, Bird is uh, uh, very, very well liked because uh, <coughs> it feeds on uh, lice. And because they are so strong and so potent, that means that the local uh, Lady Bird is in fact uh, becoming extinct. So you have a Petri dish. Uh, is inoculated with bacteria. You do that normally in one of those test cabinets and you put this in and um, if you look at the lower chart uh, in this hemolife, uh, you cannot find any uh, bacteria against the equally uh, germ. But in the Asian one, the Cochinella, Septem Pontata, that was in fact the um, inhibiting cord. In other words, that is a good immune system. But what is it that creates this inhibition cord? So, and the Asian 
Lady Bird uh, comes into on TV when we're talking uh, about their uh, hibernation habitat. So they go into homes and people uh, call TV and say, oh, there's so many of those, they are invading my house. And then they shredder all of those. And then we looked at this, found a substance in it that we don't have in other ladybirds. Now, I can't just uh, do that with uh, many, many uh, kilograms that I can put into the shredder. Uh, so we call this Harmonio oxyridis. So we uh, were able to use that bacteria uh, synthetic synthetically, but the effect was not as good as we thought. <coughs> the uh, tuberculosis uh, bacterium was, of course, the one that was the uh, one that reacted the most, and it's also used against malaria because it always attacks a certain stage, either you know when it's in your liver or at another place of your body, then it becomes effective, but not across the board. So other colleagues from Max Planck, for example, said, how can that be? They did a new thesis and they tried it too, and they thought that it is also good against maniosis, uh, which is a tropical disease, about 12 million people uh, may have it, and uh, there is maybe 2 million more every year, but there's only one um, medication that is uh, good against it. So the leishmaniosis, uh, is something that we simply cannot treat at the moment. But um, Harmonim apparently is effective. And uh, Druid is another center where we look at tropical diseases that have not been cared for. And then Hebeli was able to show that the uh, Hebeliosis, um, that's something that uh, you get when you get into tropical sweet water. It's a parasite. And there's hardly anything that we can use against it. And we um, were able to find uh, substructural changes. Uh, and that is very important. So uh, parasites, of course, they lay many, many eggs. So you have to actually hit those. And that's why you do that with the fluorescent microscope. And harmonine is, in fact, has an effect on their eggs. So now I wonder why this harmonium, this um, Asian ladybird has this weapon. And when I started to do research on this ladybird, the Asian lazy bird, I thought this is incredible, it has to be dead, because these are blood cells, and then you see it's full of a parasite. It took a long time. These are microsporidias, um, very small fungi that are inside the cells and kill it. And I figure, how can they survive that? And we did a few experiments. If uh, I take hemolymphs from the Asian ladybird and inject it into the local ones, they will in fact die. So who are the biggest enemies of uh, the ladybird? They are cannibals. Other uh, ladybirds will eat them. So the local ones, uh, will die of it. So harmonium, in fact, does protect them. So we injected blood into the seven dot ladybird. But if I have synthetic harmony, that didn't worry them at all. So it was actually the microsporides. And if it is like that, if the Asian ladybird uh, uh, does not die of it, but if somebody else eats it, then that animal will die. Uh, in other words, it uses like a weapon. So once we found that out and then we published that in science, a beautiful um, Beautiful pictures here, as you see, the invasive harlequin ladybird carries biological weapons against native competitors. And we can make them usable, these, this weaponry. And I wanted to use that for another example. So there is another uh, beetle 
uh, which is the undertaker uh, beetle and uh, it kills uh, other insects and then um, digs a hole and puts them in there. But uh, this uh, is, he manages somehow to conserve, chemically conserve, the things that he has in fact been burying. So, we thought, how can he do that? So we just looked at uh, the saliva and the pee and the, the different types of insides um, and if every insect has that in a molecule then of course it's worth doing an analysis but there was nothing spectacular about it but um, I wanted to know why in the world does this animal conserve um, uh, the, you know, the, the grape sugar beetle, why does he do it? Well, he wants to have fun, wants to have lay eggs, and then the, uh, the carcass is then used as uh, a feeding ground for um, the breed. So, how can uh, an insect uh, somehow digest something that is a hundred times bigger than, it, uh, than itself? So how does it do it? And I wanted to know what is in that saliva. So we looked at the grave diggers' um, intestines, looked at uh, in, uh, metabolites, and we detected the secretions of necrophoros vespolites, and we saw that the grave digger doesn't do that by itself, but that it uses microorganisms. So we had the peptides here in the picture, um, so the grave digger uh, takes up a lot of bacteria and has to s protect its own bacteria from the foreign um, bacteria. And this shows what uh, the intestinal, intestinal flora looks like, and it will take us years to f take this to the end. But it give me, let me give you one example how we can do uh, value creation with uh, insects. So, in the after of the grave digger, there is a type of yeast. And uh, this is the only type of uh, yeast uh, that can, in fact, uh, minimize and reduce fat. And all the substances that are needed there are in that yeast. And that, in fact, is uh, in um, this grave digger's ass. And you don't take uh, all of it like this, but you have to really worry and about this, but also be happy out about it. Interestingly enough, uh, there is no smell attached to this. Normally, you, you, you know that uh, when you do research, the, and also the smell uh, you know, of, of uh, carcasses is terrible, but this yeast, is, in fact, is able to <coughs> reduce the smell. And if there is no smell, no other predators will approach that carcass. So incredible, the stuff that this ladybird is doing. So, so we had um, um, analysis, we did analysis of uh, the intestinal flora of the grave digger. Uh, so there must be organisms that produce antibiotics. And it's not that we have a lack of antibiotic substances, but we have a lack of new antibiotics, antibiotics that do not have any negative side effects. So the one that are not bad for the grave digger uh, probably also has something that is not bad for people. So uh, it's always activity against a certain bacterium and those that uh, were profitable and uh, successful, we used them, and then uh, we uh, saw that uh, it is also against methods, against uh, fungi. And 
sozusagen an neuen Sachen machen. We look at them and see what is it that they are in fact producing. We had a project with the Max Planck Institutes for Chemical Biology uh, and therefore we had uh, special funding, application of insect derived microbes in industrial biotechnology. That was the new project. So we looked at associated microorganisms that are interesting for the industry. I gave you the example of the grave digger. But uh, it is also the regular moth. Well, how can uh, this moth eat clothes and other uh, butterfly moth cannot do that, other, other caterpillars? So what is it that this moth can do? So we looked at uh, their intestinal flora and analyzed it. So if I use a special bacterium from the intestines, you see it gets into, it gets a special coloration. So we saw the dependence of certain bacteria that build enzymes that help uh, to reduce uh, keratin. Uh, and that is cannot be um, reduced in uh, proteases. And therefore, we had um, enzymes that perform this activity. Which leads me to the next subject, and this is what I wanted to, to share with you today, because we are talking about sustainability. The insects are booming right now as an alternative protein source. So are we going to be eating crickets and locusts from now on? No, uh, it's not uh, for sushi, that may be fine. Our idea is different. Uh, we want to address the problem that you all know. We have a growing world population, everybody has, wants to eat. And eventually the question is, uh, how do we uh, cover this demand? Uh, apparently we don't care about it. Uh, we burn down the tropical forests. Uh, how much soy is in these uh, products? Look at uh, the cow, the chicken, uh, the pig. Uh, why? Because soy is actually um, harvested in tropical countries. So, insects are a great source of proteins. Um, I can uh, uh, produce a great deal of proteins. Uh, there uh, is no problem. And now, um, uh, insects uh, as food and feed are being developed uh, into a billion dollar market. Insect in France, it's booming. Um, they allowed a uh, worm to be used, the mealworm uh, and the soldier fly. Uh, that can be used for any and that will make it into proteins. Uh, a good source. So this is um, this company Insect and they are fo now building the biggest mealworm farm in Amiens in France. I'm not the alone by, mys by myself in uh, Gießen. So the question is, this mealworm protein, does it have a positive effect? And in fact, it does lower the cholesterol level in rats. And the uh, fat value uh, are good. So it was in fact uh, giving you a healing effect. So that gives us hope for the future, because look at these um, livers, because it may have a beneficial effect uh, for beasts of burden. And that's why the mealworm has been accepted in France. So, and in the European Union. So it's not only a small investment, but we're talking about big investments now. Um, and what we're doing in Gießen, we use the insects as the missing link for the circular economy. So we want to couple this with other forms of insects and put it all together. And we uh, do it together uh, with crabfish industry and also for the fish um, breeding. So 
And shrimp can only be, be used if uh, you do it in those farms because you cannot really do it outside those areas and that's why uh, you have to do it on such professional level. If not, you would have be shipping it across um, the world. And the, uh, again, uh, this is uh, soldier flies to be, to be used as a feed for the shrimp. So. Uh, these are things that we have from the industry, um, uh, the residuals from a uh, cider industry, from uh, the beer industry, all of it can be used and uh, all of it can be used to have the black soldier fly uh, and that is only possible if you have it directly uncoupled from um, fish meal and the the sea industry. And therefore, we have this major project that we have started in Gießen and it has been very successful. It now has an investor. And we stay at Gießen in the Fraunhofer uh, Institute. We have a special uh, institute for insect breed that we are building up. We want to couple it in such a way that we do have a circular economy, zero waste, and that is being done at a large scope. So the Fraunhofer Institute that I'm building up right now has um, many uses. Uh, it is, of course, the sustainable control uh, with the reduction of waste and, uh, of course, biodiversity research. So if you're interested, uh, please do contact me. What is important uh, is that uh, we also connect this to those that come after us. So we have an international master program for the insect biotechnology and bioresources. I have to say at this point, thank you very much for the uh, to the state of Hessen. The Löwe pro program is helping us. Uh, the centers, of course, are uh, helping us. We got more than 50 million, and I'm a member of the uh, institute that Professor Stefan Pauls talked about earlier. So we were able to draw people to Gießen, uh, to Heisenberg uh, candidates and the Emma Noether program. So we now have professorships and permanent positions, um, tenure. So if we take it all together, what we have been able to garner in terms of uh, public funding, the different programs, DFG, DFG projects, uh, we are at more than 100 million. And I can say that uh, learning from the insects means learning to be a winner. So, Mr. Braun uh, and also again our governor were present when we opened this um, new insect hotel as we call it, but of course it's not only a place for insects to be in. So we have 150 uh, yellow biotech uh, technicians working on this project and I can only say thank you very much for your attention. And those of you who are interested, together with Akatis, we want to have a special evening where you can visit us, you can take a look at our research institute, and then you can ask questions directly. And those uh, who can ask the question now, well, you have my address down there, and thank you very much for your attention. Thanks a lot, Mr. Wilczynskas. Bravo. It is really great to listen to you. So. Thanks a lot. Very interesting, simple, and interesting to, t to, to listen to. So, great, amazing. There's a lot of to see in. So, Dr. Lieber, there's a lot of things coming in front of us are, that are in front of us. So, it sounds like that there are a lot of investors already interested. You are con as working as a consult for investors, the farming that I mentioned, there is a competition on a worldwide level and the, the 
um, plants that are constructed are getting bigger and bigger, and this is also depending on investors. So we <coughs> we need. So it is my expert knowledge that I consult, and also I consult uh, different administrations. So of course, the concept that uh, we are. Um, offering is unique and maybe we can copy and paste it in another site. So I've got international requests and we are looking for a certain, well, maybe a new site, an additional site. Our topic is back to the nature. We uh, observe the nature and trespass uh, the usage. What else is what could be used? Which project? So spiders are eating insects. So uh, <laughs> the spider silk is uh, something different. So, but insects are producing silk as well. So, for instance. Um, the caddy fly, caddies flies, they live in water and have got a special coverage and this silk is working well in water and is very good for wounds. We're doing that with a wound dressing bandage and we're doing that with uh, the Heisenberg Institute and maybe it is a very good material, basic material for wound bandages. Something that you didn't mention is the plant protection. Is there something new? The insects, working with insects, uh, you are not everybody is darling. It's all, it has got often a negative connotation. So if you bundle everything to, together, what insects are eat, eating, so they are really our competitors. We have to take the control over them. We don't need pesticides, we need something different. And this is the main work of my institute. We have got different approaches. We have got an RMNI uh, approach with a double string. And we um, have an effect on the insect that it will die. So RDNI can, could be designed in a following way that is only for one species. You have got an RNA design that you, uh -huh, that you feed to a bee and um, then the mite of the bee dies, but not the bee by itself. So we had a project in, uh, that was very successful, but it's nothing interesting for uh, Europe or Germany because they are genetically genetically modified. The RNA is, uh, well, um, must be live, have a longer lifetime than 24 hours and be focused on the, let's say, on the spot where it has to act. So this is really Champions League. And I think we are leading in Germany. So we had the first field experiments carried out to substitute pesticides. So we had got like the defensor and the attackers and what you describe with the mRNA interference is to be very focused on one attacker, being so selective. Uh, have we still a chance to have the variety? So we have got a, a very good pairing, we are in Hessen. We have got more and more mosquito, mosquito varieties, for instance, the tiger fly, and they had got dengue, chica, whatever sickness. So they're expanding. The tiger mosquito is still not here, but the question is when will they arrive? In France, they are already fighting against it, and we have got uh, now prepare new strategies. How can I fight against the mosquito without damaging uh, the local mosquitoes and the 
RMAE is an option. All the medicine that we is proceeding from the plants are an option. So we are looking for in safest um, varieties because they have got new weapons. <laughs> the local cockroach has nothing to tell us. So the grave trigger bug is uh, very r rare here. Uh, we only have the acing grave trigger in uh, Europe. So we have got the Nagoya protocol. We can not only uh, research in the rainforest, we have got also a local for, um, project. Not only tropical insects are interesting. So. It is easier to collect bugs here and have a deeper look at that. And that's really enough. We have three minutes left. The next speaker is around the corner. And we have got two questions. Cockroach is one point. Cockroach beforehand, before time, were um, the big survivor. Which insects would survive um, the cl climate change? And the second question is, when do you think there will be the first recognized uh, insect burger. So first of all, concerning the cockroach, they have really very interesting microorganisms. They have got a very big biological potential, but the climate change, there will be um, um, a very huge switching. So the mosquitoes will be maybe spreading here. So we have got a really change. We have got a change. And if it's get cooling down, well, other varieties will survive. So cockroach are really adapting very well to anything and insects in general. So the insect burger is already there. You can buy it. For instance, the mealworm is accepted at Euro. You can Google that. So insect burger is already there. Have you tried it? Of course, we produce sausages. Fraunhofer is leading. Um, in this point, and so the proteins of insects were, were used to produce sausages, and we have also a laboratory where uh, clients can try this meat. I'm not eating the insect by itself, so I'm eating the protein. I can use that for instance, it's similar to um, so soil. So this is a proper science area. So we have got really a big market for that. Insect protein uh, is required worldwide. Battlesman, for instance, RTL, NTV, they have got, uh, four years ago, they had got a big show. And they had um, a show where you only can could eat insects. So. Maybe when we uh, will have a show at for the Fraunhofer Institute, we will try the different insects. So there are not that many questions. Stefan Risse um, indicates me I've got a lot <coughs> of motivational emails. Um, and thanks a lot for being here.